Bill the Handyman up here in Northern California. How y'all doing today? Today we're looking at a, it's gonna be the Whirlpool. I have the matching set to this and a washing machine. Uh, I did a little video on the washing machine where the, basically uh, it got corroded. They were running uh, the regular detergent. They're supposed to be running the high efficiency detergent and the, the, the basket fell through because of the rot. But anyway, this one here is got a dead control panel. So it's completely dead. So we'll take it apart and take a look at it and see what we can do with it. So this one has these clips on the side where you have to use a flathead screwdriver to push in. And once you push in, it compresses these tangs and you compress the tang and it'll pull up. You can see how that's fastened in there. You basically stick your screwdriver in there. Push in on that. And that'll allow you to lift up. So, this one here looks pretty pretty well sealed up. Doesn't look like you can do much with it. All we can really do is test it, make sure we have juice going up to the board. It's black, it's a black and uh, white wire. So these two wires here probably should be hot. So, and then luckily enough, we have the schematic. This is the troubleshooting manual, which really is probably not gonna apply to it. These manuals are normally tucked in here somewhere so that the tech can uh, get to it. So, <clears throat> yeah, this one here, you know, it's gonna say something like, you know, if you've got a dead board, make sure it's plugged into the wall. That's basically what they're gonna tell you on that. So basically, the troubleshooting manual says basically this. First it says to check the three, uh, the P3 and the th P4 connectors, which are that ribbon cable right there. And that ribbon, ribbon cable is fine. It's well seated in the socket and uh, it was fine and it doesn't look corroded either so next thing it's, it's asking us to do is basically it's asking us to check the touch pad and so basically it's asking us to read the results okay so here's why I see the uh, numbers on the board so these are the numbers that they're referring to on this board. The problem is that when you have the uh, ribbon cable plugged in, you can't see the numbers very well. Theoretically, you could get to them through the back, but there's that plastic coating over those connections which may make it hard. So what I've done is I've just take a, took a piece of uh, wire and stuck it in the socket and measured the connections. Now, I have no reason to believe that this board, this control, uh, this touchpad is, is in, in bad condition because it's not worn at all. So, I've already checked uh, three of these. It's a momentary switch, basically when you have the meter on. And they ask that these be polarized, the connections be polarized. I'm not sure why. Uh, well, I'm actually running a diode check. Well, that may or may not make a difference. But uh, anyway, uh, the touchpad seems good. Basically, they're asking you to go down the line, t check all the touchpad connections and according to the numbers here and the different polarity with a meter for continuity. And if there's continuity on the touchpad connections, then the board's bad. So on this board, what I probably could do is I could trace the input coming into this transformer. 
this transformer it does have a have some numbers on it the transformer is probably going to be I can trace the, the hot leads the black and white leads to the transformer <clears throat> and so the inlet transformer would be here the input for the transformer would be here on this side it looks like and then the output would be here now if we're not getting any output here it doesn't there's no reference to uh, what sort of voltage we're going to get out of here but if there's no voltage at all and it's probably going to be DC there's not no voltage at all yeah because these relays are DC here so I think it's going to be converted to DC this is the heater relay and this is the motor relay so that these have probably have nothing to do with the uh, fact that the LCD whatever digital readout is not functioning so it's going to probably be this transformer here I would guess that's, that went out on it and I could probably get a replacement transformer for this rather than uh, buy a whole new board so that's your tip for today if you need any help you can contact me at applianceworks at yahoo.com if this video helped you please send me a donation bills Recycling Enterprises, P.O. Box 7021, Eureka, California, 95502. You can call me 707-445-1591 and or send me an email. Thanks for watching. So I really don't know what exactly the problem was. It may have been a loose connection. Because all I really did was take basically this thing off of here and then put it back in and made sure the connections were tight. And then the board came up again. So, not sure what exactly happened in here, what made it come on, but it comes on now.